Joining me in this uh, conversation now is the Minister KTR. I want to understand from you, sir, we are here at Davos, the big picture really that you see emerging. We see this sort of, uh, one can't help but notice, this very sort of healthy competition, if one can say, going on between the states, very close to what the other states are doing as well. What is your pitch? What is it that you want to take away from the WEF this year? Well, Sonal, in fact, my competition is not with any Indian state. In fact, I uh, I might sound a bit uh, cocky when I say this, but uh, competition actually as city Hyderabad is with uh, large you know, cities across the world. In fact, uh, if you think about it, today an investor, when he's making a choice between um, India and the rest of the world, I think the toss-up is not between Indian cities or in, among Indian states. Mm. It is more between India versus you know, uh, another country. So therefore, uh, my job here is to mm. position my state as a premier gateway for anyone to come and invest in because you know my strengths are information technology in fact if you look at the top five most valued tech companies of the world all five of them without an exception have their second largest basis in the world in my city mm -hmm. apple amazon google facebook microsoft in fact amazon's world's largest campus is in hyderabad right. and i can go on uber salesforce mm -hmm. novartis micron qualcomm all these large so, corporates yeah so sector wise then uh, life sciences we've discussed already huge it also EV, a space yes. where we see you evolving more and more. Yes. What can we expect in the coming years? Well, sustainability is a very, very important cause, uh, you know, that our state has been championing. And one of the things we do on the EV space is not just electric vehicles, but also energy storage policy as well. We've mm -hmm. come out with a very comprehensive EV and storage policy, which is attracting mm -hmm. large number of investments. In fact, uh, uh, world's largest three-wheeler plant. Uh, you know, owned by an American company called Billiti is being set up in Telangana. Hmm. Likewise, a Chinese company called BYD, whose Indian arm is called Electra, hmm. is setting up a large bus manufacturing facility. Hmm. I have a number of other things in the pipeline, at least four or five. In fact, uh, both two-wheelers, three-wheelers and four-wheelers, all electric. So mobility and especially electric mobility. Hmm. And we are even con conceptualizing, in fact, we are in the last leg of conceptualizing the creation of a mobility cluster in hmm. Telangana. So. All in all, what we would like to see is not just manufacturing happening, but also research and development, a lot of adoption of EVs mm. also happen, and also a lot of new storage uh, uh, you know, research and development happen in my state. So it's a comprehensive ecosystem mm. uh, that we're focused on, not just uh, one I piece find, of the puzzle. I find EV interesting because anyways, manufacturing in automobile is not something that we conventionally see Telangana as. A lot of neighboring states have sort of championed that cause, but this is going to be, you say, a prime focus yes. moving forward, right? Absolutely. In fact, see, the way to think of EVs is a lot of people make this uh, mistake of assuming that EV is a, a variation of an automobile. It's mm -hmm. not. In fact, if you ask me, EV is a computer on four wheels. So therefore, there's a lot of electronics. There's a lot of coding, a lot of software embedded inside a auto in inside something that looks like an automobile. So mm -hmm. therefore, any OEM who is looking to expand and who is thinking of uh, uh, EV uh, uh, hub, hmm. I would say my state is the best because we have the talent pool, which hmm. is much needed to actually create the next gen EVs and a lot of research and development that has to go on. If you have to remain on the cutting edge of autonomous driving, of number of other things uh, that are being seen across the world, in fact, I have to share with you. Large number of uh, EV companies have already set up uh, their research and development facilities in mm -hmm. Hyderabad. Mm -hmm. Fisker uh, mm -hmm. is a, is a, uh, is a large... But are these just compiling things together or are we actually producing them when it comes to batteries also? They're currently involved in research and development, which mm -hmm. is of course all on uh, their computers. Mm -hmm. But eventually the hope mm -hmm. is that uh, they will also l start looking at manufacturing because mm -hmm. you know once you have that ecosystem, once you have the research and development uh, wherewithal, I think the automatic extension of that would be setting up uh, a base. And manufacturing is also also happening simultaneously so it's a com it's an ideal combination between the two of them right uh, since you said EV and sustainability is such a huge cause as well I just want to understand your concerns on batteries I mean we're still dealing with a lot of shortages that have happened semiconductors China lockdown all of that still contributing to it is that a space India and maybe Telangana also wants to capture like one of the major takeaways from the pandemic was that I mean, Atm Nirbhar is something that Prime Minister also talks about. What are your thoughts on it? Well, in fact, uh, we as a state, we have an entity called as the TSMDC, the Telangana State Mineral Development Corporation. We have entered into an MOU with Bolivia uh, for lithium. So we are one of those few states in India which actually took cognizance of uh, the shortage or you know, future needs, and therefore we have entered into a direct MOU on a G2G. So we are doing some things which uh, probably nobody else is in India is doing. Mm. And uh, in my humble opinion, while lithium is important, I think also a lot of uh, uh, innovation that's happening on sodium and a bunch of other new uh, uh, minerals, mm. I think is also equally impressive. And that's you know one of the things uh, I'm going to explore in Davos because a lot of 
innovators who are doing very, very, uh, you know, cutting edge things mm. on mobility, on uh, EVs are here. We are in fact meeting uh, with them. We are even uh, in fact planning a mobility um, round table. Yeah. So hopefully some uh, very interesting learnings for us. Yeah. What happened to Elon Musk and your tweet of inviting him to come and invest in Telangana? Any replies over there? Well, uh, 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 you know, I, we've had a discussion right mm -hmm. after that. Uh, oh, you did happen to speak with him? Yes, of course. We yes. spoke to his team and a number of his teammates. In fact, uh, we met with them. Um, we had a discussion. But unfortunately, Government of India seems to be fixated on this notion of not wanting uh, cars made in China to be imported into India and that's what I think is putting him off because in his opinion while his I mean, lowest model costs anywhere around $40,000 he wants to explore and understand uh, the market appetite in India firstly before he starts manufacturing so therefore it's a chicken or egg kind of a challenge right now where uh, uh, I think both government and uh, him are trying to kind of trying to uh, play the game of blink or you know uh, literally you know uh, see who, who's going to blink first I guess but the point is, whether or not Tesla invests in India, whether or not Elon uh, comes to India, the fact is uh, the EV ecosystem is shaping up really well. And I think uh, the first mover will certainly have an advantage and Elon also should not, uh, 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 you know, miss out on this because India is a huge market, end of the day 1.3 billion, hmm. uh, large middle class, upwardly mobile, the per capita is rising and hmm. therefore I think it's a story that nobody can really ignore. All right, Elon Musk, if you're watching this, get I the know. message straight up from here. Thank you so much for your time, <laughs> sir. You